Chapter 1 In a desolate land filled with bloodshed and the dead, one man is the only survivor. Dead soldiers and a giant on the brink of death surround him. Ahayut, the giant, completely failed to think that there is a human with such great power. The giant appeared in the Empire twenty days ago and was the last of the three giants that brought about destruction with an unknown goal. Ronan blames the giant for making half of the Empire's land a graveyard. He tells the giant about his dead friends, one of them is being burned to a crisp by a nasty red dragon, and the other is sealed away eternally by a geezer called Lorhorn. Ahayut tells Ronan not to conceal the truth with his shallow words since he knows that powerful warriors like him have all perished in the battle. Ronan cannot understand what the giant means, but the giant makes it known to him that his time is also coming to an end. Ahayut tells Ronan that if he had realized his talents much sooner and concentrated on his training, he would have been a large obstacle to their grand scheme. The giant praises him for being impressive, but it is too late since Ronan's world has already been engulfed by starlight, which was their plan all along. Ronan then cuts off the giant's head, and he remembers his comrades as he sees them all dead, which makes him weep bitterly. He wonders why it is only his sword that can kill the giant. Ronan hears the voice of a woman calling for help. The voice sounds familiar to Ronan, and he is surprised that she is still alive. Ronan goes to check, and he is pleasantly surprised to see that it is the Grand Commander who is severely injured with one of her arms cut off. Chapter 2 Ronan is surprised to see how badly off the Grand Commander is. The Commander's name is Adeshim, and she asks Ronan if Ahayud is dead. He tells her that he killed the giant. The Commander feels relieved by this and thanks Ronan for this. Ronan makes a request, telling the Grand Commander that he wants the bodies of the disciplinary soldiers to be treated well instead of abandoning or burning their bodies. But the Commander tells him to look after the disciplinary soldiers' bodies since he looks stronger than she is. Ronan coughs out blood as he makes it known to the Commander that he could die at any time. Ronan is asked what he wants to do if he survives, and as he thinks about it, he concludes that he would like to go to the academy since he is still bothered by what the giant told him. More importantly, Ronan's late sister's wish is to send him to the academy. The conversation ends, and soon after, the rain stops, as does the storm. Suddenly, an eight-winged giant appears, alongside other giants. Ronan and the commander wonder where those giants come from. The grand commander is startled to realize that the three giants were not the end of it. She is devastated that she has failed to defeat the giants for a third time. She gets lost in thought and Ronan tells her to get a hold of herself and use telekinesis to shoot him upward because his sword can't reach them. Ronan is determined to fight the giants, and the Grand Commander can see that Ronan is not giving up easily. She moves closer to Ronan and kisses him. He is startled, but her plan is to conceal an orb she wants to pass to him. She then whispers something inaudible in his ear. She stands up and bids him farewell as the giants launch their attack. Ronan is transported to his hometown, Nimbuton and he wonders if he has returned to the past. Chapter 3 Ronan sits under a tree as he thinks of what the Grand Commander whispered in his ear. She said that what she put in his mouth was an orb that turns back time. That's how she was able to attain the position of Grand Commander from being a tailor. The orb allows the user to return a total of four times, but she had already used it three times. There is only one chance left, and she handed it over to Ronan because she has the power to slay the giants. The Grand Commander believed that Ronan is the key to stopping the world's destruction, but first, he needs to sharpen his skills by going to Philian Academy. Ronan is concerned if he is dreaming since he cannot believe all that happened to him. Now that he is in the past, Ronan thinks of the things he should do. He sees it as an opportunity to see his older sister, Nuna, and he runs home. Suddenly, his attention is caught by a few bullies who gather around a kid hanging upside down on a tree. He notices that the kid is not hanged with rope but with magic. SL is the one who helps the bad guys hang the kid, and he is worried that something bad will happen to the kid. The bullies harass the kid into giving them all his money. They tell SL to raise the kid higher up, but out of pity, he refuses. Ronan intervenes as the bullies are about to hit SL, and the kid drops from the tree. Ronan tells Asel not to worry about the threat. Ronan asks Asel where he learned the telekinesis magic, and he replies that he learned it from a book he bought from a vendor, which looks cheap to Ronan. Hans draws out his sword. He is frustrated because Ronan did not respond to him. He makes his attack, and Ronan can see that he is strong but has a bad form. Ronan dodges the attack, which is a surprise to Hans. The bully tells Ronan to get on his knees and beg for his life to be spared. The bully makes fun of his older sister, and this makes Ronan angry. He cuts off Han's ear, and he cries in pain. Chapter 4 Han's accomplices are shocked to see that Ronan cut off his ear with a stick. Ronan tells them all to leave the place immediately, and he tells them to return the money they stole. 
They all leave, and Ronan gives the money to the bullet kid. He takes Han's sword, and he reassures the kid that he will not be bullet again. Acel interrupts and apologizes for using his magic to help the bullies, even though he had been threatened to do it. The kid tells Acel not to worry too much, telling him that he is not at fault. The boy goes home, and Ronan tells Acel that they will meet in three days since he has business with him. Ronan runs home, and as he gets to the entrance, he wonders if the flowers he got are a bit excessive. As Ronan is about to throw away the flowers, his sister, Eril, comes out of the house. For an instant, he thinks to himself how he had wished for this very moment when he was on the battlefield. He wonders if he should apologize for leaving her without saying farewell in his previous life. Ronan gives Eril the flowers he got for her, and she is happy to get flowers from his prickly little brother. Ronan asks Eril what her age is, and she replies that she is 22 years old. Ronan figures that it will take the giants 10 years to invade. Eril is bright, kind, and warm like he remembers her to be. He wishes for that moment to last forever. For the sake of the nation and his sister, Ronan decides to join the academy, and Eril is very happy because of Ronan's decision. Eril runs into her room and gets a surprise for Ronan. The surprise is a saving pot full of money she had been saving in case Ronan changed his mind about joining the academy. Ronan tells Eril that he wants to go to the Imperial School, Philian Academy. Chapter 5 Philian Academy is the best school in the Empire. It has the continent's most outstanding professors and is funded by the Imperial family. The school is held high in status producing figures such as Grand Commander Adeshin, Sword Master Shalifan, the Winter Witch, and the Worst Criminal. Ronan is determined to get into the academy for his sister. Ronan goes to meet up with Acel. He wants Acel to use his telekinesis powers on him, telling her to lift him as high as she can. Ronan sees how good it is, although it still lacks height and stability. During his battle with Ahayu, telekinesis was what allowed him to fight on an equal footing with the giant. Telekinesis is a rare ability among mages, which means that Acel will be the crucial element Ronan will need for his battle against Ahayu. While in the air, Ronan cuts his mana, a move he does with his sword. Ronan tells Acel that he passed the test as he hands over a bag to him. He tells Acel to follow him because they have something to do before the moon disappears. They head for Philian Academy. Acel is scared to go with Ronan because he believes he can't do anything right and has no talent. Ronan tells Acel that he has an innate talent that she wastes by humoring punks. He also tells him that he is a crybaby and a loser, but he has the chance to change all that by following him. Ronan narrates to Acel about his previous life, and Acel feels grateful that Ronan is worried about him. He then agrees to follow him, asking Ronan to teach him what he needs to know, and Acel's first hurdle begins. To bring out his skill, Ronan takes Acel to face the leader of a group of lunar goblins. Chapter 6 Lunar Goblins Live in the Area Their yellow skin and disfigured bodies differentiate them from ordinary goblins. Lunar Goblins' unique trait is that they go crazy for gold and silver. They ambush merchants to steal their treasure. On nights with a full moon like this one, they gather all the stolen treasure and hold a festival. Ronan reveals to Acel that they are here to steal the treasure. It is a surprise to Acel to hear of such a species of goblin. But Ronan cannot explain to her how he got to know about the goblin since the information is from his past life. Ronan tells Acel that all he needs to do is move all the treasure with his telekinesis magic into a bag while the goblins are sleeping. Acel sees this as a dangerous task since he might make a mistake. Ronan thinks him a coward and explains that to get into the Philian Academy, they need two things, money to afford the Academy's tuition fee, and real experience. To win against the aristocrats at the Academy, they need to gain experience. They have to risk their lives to gain experience, and the goblins are the perfect opponents since they will get rewarded with money too. Acel uses his telekinesis to move the jewels into the bag with them, and Ronan can see that Acel is better than he thought. As they are preparing to head back, some men make noises that wake the goblins. They quickly realize that their gold is gone. They spot Ronan and Acel and charge towards them. Acel is scared, and he suggests that they throw the bag at them, but Ronan refuses. He brings out his sword, and he can see that the sword can only withstand 15 attacks since it is made from cheap steel. He counts at least 30 goblins. With one swing of his sword, he slays the goblins, and now there are only 14 left. Chapter 7 Ronan slays all the goblins. Acel cannot believe what he is seeing. During the fight, Ronan disappeared and reappeared in an instant, after which the goblins had been killed. On their way home, Ronan feel his muscles are sore, which makes him think that his body hasn't grown enough. Acel asks Ronan about the skill he used in defeating the goblins, and he claims he knows nothing about the skill. As they journey home, an arrow is shot at them, and luckily, Ronan catches it just as it's about to hit Acel. Ronan confronts the men who shot the arrow, 
and asks them who they are. They claim that they thought they were not human, but Ronan can see that they are after the treasure in the bag. He asks them who they are one more time, and one of them introduces himself as Caraballo, as he draws out his sword swiftly, ready to attack. Ronan grabs the man's hand and makes his attack as the other quickly moves to stab Ronan, but Acel uses his telekinesis magic, making the man unable to move. Ronan makes his attack and kills him since he heard that they were the Caraballo, which is the Empire's most evil poaching group responsible for every crime possible. As they are about to leave, they notice that the poacher's bag is moving on its own. Ronan opens it, and a strange bird escapes from it. Chapter 8 Acel and Ronan are mesmerized to see a bird with blue feathers. The bird has the Caraballo's shackles that disturb the prisoner's mana and restrict their movement. The poachers use these shackles in rare cases to catch mystical creatures. The bird uses communication magic, but Acel is spooked by the talking bird. Ronan knows the magic is used by the bird's owner to talk to them. Varen, the bird's guardian, had been trying to communicate, but it was not going through. Varen asks who they are, and Ronan replies that they are just passersby who got into a fight with poachers who kidnapped the bluebird. Ronan breaks the shackles on the bird's legs and tells it to go home, but the bird shoves its body in Ronan's face. Varen explains that the bird would like Ronan to pluck out one of its feathers so that they can meet again. The bird flies away leaving behind a mysterious object that seems to sting Ronan's hand. A few days later, Ronan takes the treasure they stole from the goblins to the merchant to sell. They meet Duan Carabel, who finally buys the treasures at a very good price compared to all the other merchants. Ronan shows the merchant the egg that the magical bird laid in his palm, but he doesn't plan to sell it. It seems to be a very tough item, making Ronan think it might be a valuable treasure. That night the bird left it. Ronan thought it was poop and thrust it against a rock. Ronan was surprised to see that the egg broke the boulder. The merchant knows nothing about the egg and suggests getting it appraised in a specialized place. Ronan asks the merchant if he has any books about Philian Academy and explains that they are preparing to take an entrance examination. The merchant welcomes them and tells them that his daughter also wants to write the entrance exam for the academy. Maria, the merchant's daughter, shows up just in time. She asks her father who Ronan and Acel are, and he tells her they are important people he had a big deal with. Ronan moves close to Maria and asks her if she uses the middle name Sen. She agrees but wonders how he knew that. He then asks her if she has a male private part. Chapter 9 Out of anger, Maria slaps him, and Ronan can confirm she is Maria from her slap and sensation. When Ronan was a disciplinary soldier in a place called Armarlin, Maria was in charge of supplies. She had a great work ethic and an easygoing personality that could get along with anyone without hesitation. When talks about male private parts occurred among the guys, Maria got unusually angry and had an unusual habit of slapping people. He wanted to ask her what the reason was, but the chance never came because Maria died before him on the battlefield. Ronan now has his answer, Count Maria was a girl. She wants to slap Ronan again but he knocks her head, telling her that he allowed her to hit him because he was wrong. They start fighting, but Acel and Maria's father separate them. After a while, Ronan and Maria get along well, and it looks like they never fought. Ronan takes three swords and a magic wand. Maria tells him that the black iron sword is sturdy and won't break easily. Maria asks Acel which magic he uses since he is a mage, and he replies that it's telekinesis magic. Maria tells her that if he does well, he might get a scholarship. She also asks Ronan what techniques he will show them during the practical exam, but Ronan seems lost as he does not know he has to show a technique to impress the professors. Maria explains things concerning the theory and the practical exam of the academy. She tells Ronan that he needs to sense his mana to display a unique technique. Since he knows almost nothing about it, Maria takes him outside to give him some special training. Mana is the root of the power of nature, and like air, it's a natural energy that exists everywhere in the world but it isn't eligible for everyone to use. One needs to see and feel their mana and be able to use mana sense. The Philian's prospective students surpass that stage, and they apply for Philian after learning their mana technique. Maria explains to Ronan the difference between aura and mana. Ronan has met warriors who used mana and aura on the battlefield. They bragged about their power, and they were annoying too, but they still died when they got sliced. They get ready to spar. Ronan thinks Maria is just a young girl, but she surprises him with her heavy sword attack. 